Hey, what's up everyone? This is Vegetarian Zombie and I want to welcome you to a brand new series. That is the series called Intro to Twine Sugar Cube. Okay, now some of you may be wondering what exactly is twine and others may be wondering what exactly is sugar cube. Let's start from the top. Twine itself is what I like to think of as a game engine. Actually, the website calls it itself it, a way, an open source tool for telling interactive and nonlinear stories. But you can do so much more with Twine. And what's great about Twine is that the barrier to the barrier for entry is very, very small. Typically, if you wanted to make a game, you would you would have to learn something like Unity or Unreal Engine or some other third party engine that requires a high degree of of technical knowledge. The great thing about Twine is that you can literally start creating an interactive story or your own game right after you finish watching this video. It's really that easy. Now, typically, you will use Twine to create interactive stories. That's, that's kind of how it came about. But by learning JavaScript and CSS, you can build a rich layer of interactivity on top of that so that you can create some really visual elements and visual mechanics of your story or of your game, so to speak. And you'll see, and you'll see it in action in just a moment. The other question some of you may have is, what is SugarCube? Well, Twine is an interesting environment. It has a common set of tools that you can use to create your stories, but then you select a type of format you want to write your story in. And these formats interpret your code somewhat differently from another format. Meaning if you choose one format to write your code in, your code will not run in another format. You'll get a lot of weird rendering errors. The default story format that Twine has you use is called Harlow. And Harlow is designed to be very beginner friendly. It's not designed for people who write code at all. It's designed for you to just hit the ground running and not and it tries its best not to tie you up in any of the syntax or any of the semantics and so forth. And it's really good at that purpose. In fact, if you're interested in learning about Harlow, check out my other series, Intro, Introduction to Twine, where I cover Harlow in depth throughout several videos. While Harlow is really good at what it does, you may quickly find yourself reaching the ceiling of it. And you'll know when that happens, when you start writing a lot of code to get around sort of the limitations of Harlow, you, you might find yourself hacking it, so to speak, to get the effect you want. At which case, you've really outgrown that story format. Now, there's a few other story formats you can use. One is called Snowman, whereas Harlow is very beginner friendly, Snowman is advanced. In fact, Snowman is all about getting out of your way. It's designed for professional web developers who, who are experienced in, in CSS, HTML, and JavaScript. So going from Harlow to Snowman is not realistic. You'd have to spend months or possibly years to really hone down the skills that is required in that story format. Thankfully, there's a story format in the middle, and that is called SugarCube. SugarCube aims to provide a low barrier for entry, much like Harlow, but unlike Harlow, it allows you to really build on top of it. A lot of the features that you'll be using inside of SugarCube, you can actually create your own, and that's what really gives it its power. It also has a very rich API, and an API in computer jargon is known as an application programming interface. It allows you to hook into the engine and make changes as you find necessary. For instance, if you want to change the way how files are saved or when players can even save a file, you could do that all within SugarCube. This series is aiming to teach you the ins and outs of SugarCube. When I finished my Harlow series, I started looking at the other two story formats and I found that there wasn't a lot of material produced about them. So the aim of this next video series will be covering in depth all the various aspects of SugarCube. Much like the previous series, this current tutorial series will be using examples and I highly suggest you follow along as you're watching. 
because the way you learn this stuff isn't just watching it. You have to do it. And then once you start doing it, you need to iterate on it. And then you can even help other people who are having same the same issues and so forth. This makes you a better developer all around. Okay, so enough about the grand scheme of things. Let's dive into Twine. So here you can see here, I have twinery.org open. This is the central hub for Twine. And you can see here at this intro paragraph, you can find out more information about Twine itself, how it was, cre how it was founded and created. And you have the wiki and forms. These are both very useful and I highly suggest you bookmark them. When you create a Twine story, ultimately you're, you may want to publish it. And there are places where you can publish your stories. One place is called the Inter Interactive Fiction Database. And when you publish to that, your story will automatically be picked up on the twinery.org front page. Okay, so there are a few ways to use Twine. One is you can download it as an app and run it within your computer. The other way is to use it online. I highly suggest you do not use it online. When you save your Twine story online, it's going to save it in your browser cache. And here's the thing, browsers can be very twitchy about their caches. If you decide to say, clear, clear out your cache for any reason, you'll lose all your stories. I highly suggest you just download the client and use it on your computer and avoid using the browsers altogether. And you'll also notice that this is version 1.4.2 is also available. This is the older version. In fact, the older version uses a language and syntax which is based, which is actually Sugarcube. Sugarcube took the original syntax and made it up to date for Twine 2, which is what we're using. Here I am, I'm launching Twine for the first time, and you can see it's giving me an interactive approach to learning the software. I'm just gonna skip this, but I highly suggest you do, you click this, tell me more button. Next, I'm just gonna expand this to my whole screen, so I'm gonna skip this. And right away here, I'm at my dashboard. This is where I'll have all my stories located as I'm working on them. I'm gonna create a new story. And you can see here, we have a bunch of other options, which we'll be covering throughout this series. In my last series, I created a story about being on a space station as it was falling apart. In this series, we're gonna say we're on an underwater base as it's falling apart, and we'll call this depth charge. And I'm going to click add. Right away, I'm brought into the twine development environment. And as you can see, I have already one untitled passage here. If I want to go back to my dashboard, I can just click this home button here and you'll see now I have my story here. And I have some other options here as well. This is the first passage of my story and it's called untitled passage. Each passage will have a title for it and then it will have a description. There's a lot of different ways for you to think about passages. You can think of them as a room, say, in a map, like a tr traditional game like Zork or any other interactive fiction game. You can also think of it as just a bit of paragraphs or a bit of text. It's really up to you how you want to organize these passages. There's no right and wrong way. It's just what works for you. By mousing over this, you'll see we have a bunch of options. One is we can delete this passage if we want. And the next we can edit it. And now you can see we can start working on the passage right away. You can see we also have a debug button and this will start our story at this passage. And finally, we have a starting point. This is where our story will begin. As you're working with Twine, you're gonna get a lot of these passages. And at some point you may wanna switch the starting point. And it's just a matter of clicking this rocket here. I'm gonna create another passage by clicking this plus sign. Here you can see this passage has a thin line surrounding it, whereas this line, whereas this passage has a bolded line around it. The bolded line indicates that this is the starting passage. If I select this passage and I click the rocket here, now you can see this is bolded as well. If you click this disclosure triangle, you'll open up all these different options. You'll see first is you can edit your story's JavaScript. So if you want to include any JavaScript with your story, you can put it right in here. Next, you can also edit the style sheet. So if you wanna add some CSS, you could do that as well. Here's the story format. And by clicking this, you can see we have 
different formats that we can use. Right now, our story format is using Harlow. We don't want to do that. We actually want to use Sugarcube. So I'm going to click the Sugarcube button, and then I'm going to exit out of this. Next, you can rename your story if you want, or you can snap this to grid. And if you snap it to the grid, you can see the passages will then move to the grids. So if you like to keep your passages organized, you can do it like so. You can also see your story statistics as well, your word count, your characters, and how many passages, and so forth. Your story even gets an IFID, which is a unique number specifically for your story. And that's useful if you're going to submit it at all. If you want to have a proofing copy, you can select this view proofing copy here, and you'll see all your passages outlined here. And this is a great way to check grammar, to check spelling, and so forth, so you don't have to go into each individual passage. You can also do a search if you're looking for something specific. Here I'm typing passage, and that's obviously going to be found. Here we have, I just typed one, and as you can see, it found untitled passage one. And these are ways you can actually view it, view your the outline of your story, like so. There are times when you're going to want to debug your story to test it out, and you would hit this test button, and this will enable you to see information about your story on a coding level. We'll be covering this in later videos in the series. And finally, we have the play button. And here we have here, you can see we have saves, restarts, and when we hit restart, we can click OK and restart it over again. Now I'm going to close this and I'm going to switch back to Harlow for a moment. And now I'm going to play again. And you'll notice right away that the look and feel of the story has changed dramatically from the previous format. You may be tempted to choose your format based on how they look and feel. This would be a mistake because remember, changing the format changes the code, the way that the story interprets the code. It changes the syntax that you'll be using to write your story. If I wrote everything in Sugarcube and then decided to change it to Harlow just so I can get that look and feel, my story would cease to operate as I would expect it to. Things that I had set, codes, code, and so forth, would, would no longer be interpreted the correct way, and the story most likely will not run. All right, I'm going to delete this passage here. And you can see here, do you want to delete untitled passage one? This can't be undone. And we'll just hit delete like so. In my last video tutorial series, I wrote a demonstration story about you being aboard a spaceship that was falling apart. In this video tutorial series, we're going to have you being in an underwater base that, of course, is falling apart. In this one, we're going to say you're a prisoner. So we're going to say brig. This is where you'll start off. So here we have a very small passage. We have the brig bangs from the shockwave of a tremendous explosion. You tumble out of your cot and onto the cold, damp floor. At this point, I'm going to link to another passage. I can do this to slowly provide text to the reader, such as an, an interactive novel, or I can provide additional choices. In this case, I'm going to provide one choice that the player has to click. Here I've typed the words stand up. They're put in brackets. This indicates this is going to be a link. I'm going to close this and you'll see a new passage has been created for me. I'm going to double click this and I'm just going to provide some text. Now let's play our game. 
Here I must have I must have deleted the starting point. I'm going to click the rocket and I'm going to click play. Here the brig bangs you from the shock wave of a tremendous explosion. You tumble out of your cot and onto the cold damp floor. Then I'll click stand up and you rise to your feet and another blast knocks you against a wall. As you can see, we're using Harlow. So what we need to do is switch story formats. And here we go. And then I can always restart it if I want to. As you can see, passage names are critical to linking other passages, but you don't necessarily have to rely on the passage name. Let's create a new passage, and this time I'm going to create stay on floor, like this. But in this case, I'm going to designate a passage, and I'm going to call it floor. Then when I close this, you'll see a new passage, and this is called floor. But the link itself, now I play this, you can see it's stay on floor. And this gives you a way of customizing your links while also being specific about where those links are going. At this point, you have the knowledge to create a branching story. Granted, there's really very little interactivity and there's no sense of, say, variables to track your player's state or if they do anything that you want to be aware of, but you can create a very simple branching story. In fact, I highly suggest you do that after you've watched this video, fire up Twine and just write a bunch of passages, link them together and get used to working with the interface. In the next video, we'll be covering variables. I'll be showing you what they are, why you'd want to use them and how you would use them. So until the next episode, I'll see you then.